I was just trying to quote the slok <coughs> of uh, Gita. It's a beautiful slok, and uh, it says that na asti buddhir ayuktasya. Na asti means it will not happen. Buddhi means spiritual awakening, spiritual knowledge will not happen to ayuktasya. Yukta means connected. Ayuktasya, somebody who is not connected mm -hmm. uh, to the higher self, spiritual knowledge will not happen. happen. Na buddhir, na asti buddhir ayuktasya, na cha ayuktasya bhavana. Bhavana means meditation, mm -hmm. samadhi. Bhavana is you are in bhav, at the bhav level. You are connected and the process of connection is bhavana. Mm -hmm. Meditation means bhavana. So meditation also would not happen to somebody <coughs> who is not connected. Mm -hmm. Somebody who is not connected to the higher self is the one who is going to be restless. Mm -hmm. And to the restless who is interested in the material world and material life and material pleasures, for him there is no buddhi mm -hmm. and there is no meditation. And what will happen to somebody who does not have buddhi, they don't have spiritual knowledge and some, they also do not have meditation, what will happen? Na cha avabha Abhavayat Shanti. Abhavayat. Abhavyat. You can pronounce it that way. Abhavyat means bhavna. Abhav. Bhavna <coughs> means you are in that bhav state, which is your original nature, right? And abhavyat means you always feel that something is abhav. Abhav means I have something lacking. Not knowing that you are complete, complete within, but somebody who always thinks that he is a bhavyat. So he's, that's why he's running. Mm. That's why he's running after the material objects, right? So not cha a bhavyat shanti. So anybody who keeps running after material objects and all that will not have shanti. Mm. Shanti means peace. Mm. You will not have peace in life. And ashantasya kutasukham. Without shanti, how can there be happiness? Yeah. So, Very good. in just two lines, right. it is so beautifully said that without meditation, you will not have peace. Without peace, you will not have be spiritual happy. knowledge. Yeah. And without all these things, you cannot be happy. Right. So, in just two lines, Gita describes, Krishna says that without meditation, without your connection to your roots, you will not have peace in life. Which and chapter is this? Chapter? Second chapter, uh, Slok 66. 66. Okay. Yeah. Can you say the slope again? Yeah. Oh, whole thing. Second chapter. <coughs> he says, Na asti buddhir ayuktasya, na cha ayuktasya bhavana, na cha abhavyat shantihi, ashantasya kutasukham. Mm -hmm. We'll go into chanting. I, I, I think chanting, it, it, just in two it's, lines, it yeah. just gives, it's so potent. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. These are the, like, yeah. you know, like... Once accent. you understand then the meaning, then, then, then it makes it more makes sense, sense, you know, then it really... Yeah. And then next time, all you just have to do is remember the slok, mm -hmm. and then whole yeah. meaning comes that alive, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what the advantage of chanting is. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. yeah. You chant, but you have to know the meaning yeah. first before you chant. Otherwise, chanting has Yeah, it's mechanical. Right. So, <clears throat> the thing is, roots of the tree keep on silently working without you even knowing. Mm. But your neglect of the roots ultimately turns into deep disconnection between the roots and the outside world. And the experience of samadhi just doesn't happen. And without experience of samadhi, there will not be any peace, there will not be any harmony, and there will not be any happiness. So... <clears throat> That's why it's important to have that spiritual look, at least spiritual aspect of life is very important. To realize that that's where the part of happiness, the part of bliss, the part of peace exists within. And that's why we have to have spiritual outlet. It's like if you show a beautiful flower to a painter, what will he do? He will start painting. If you show it to a poet, what will he do? He will construct a poem. If you show to a biologist, what will you start thinking? What genery, what species, what phylum it exists, where did it come from, 
it will try he will try to create uh, trace the roots of how this flower evolved over centuries mm. and what sure. not and if you show it to a spiritualist or somebody who is sannyasi he will say it's a miracle <coughs> of life and everybody is right in their own way but whatever is your basic outlook in life then your experience will take you further in that direction of whatever your experiences are happening so you can go through the whole experience of life whether you can you can have a material look or a spiritual look it's totally up to you so all the experiences it depends who is going to take what out of that experience is depends how you are training your mind and that's why it's so important to open up your self to the spiritual outlook and it's not going to happen until we realize and discuss what are our existences that's why we started out with that your body your mind and your spirit so three levels of experiences we can have now if you really look at it the body is the most visible part of our existence it has a fixed shape size color height this we can share the these experiences are unquestionable there is no two way about it everybody can share everybody can look confirm and there is nothing to it so it's a very simple existence it's a matter to for the matter to exist it has to rely on another matter we have to eat we have to drink we have to breathe to survive so our needs are material our needs are fixed and there's not a big deal to satisfy the body it just requires some shelter it requires some food it requires some drink and the needs to procreate these are basic needs at the basic level <coughs> and those things are available once these things are available the body is happy there is no actual positive pleasure at the body level there is actually nothing but discomfort at body level if its needs are not met it's like the animal life as long as the animal is hungry he's gonna be restless looking for food trying to hunt trying to catch whatever once you give him the food the lion is resting lion makes a hunt then for 2 3 days he doesn't have to eat the lion would not bother you you feed the dog dog goes in a corner and sit you feed the cow cow will be sitting and munching munching over whatever it has eaten so the basic needs of the mind are easy to meet mind or body oh sorry the body, the body. Okay. i'm sorry the the needs of the mind <coughs> again i'm mixing up <laughs> the needs of the body are very easy to furnish it does not require too much of an effort you you have a basic lifestyle you have a simple lifestyle you're not too ambitious you will have a simple job but you will have a shelter you will have some clothes you will marry and you will procreate and simple needs are taken care of so the body is happy the pleasure at the body level happens only when the discomfort disappears so you say we are i am very hungry and you get the food you appreciate okay the food satisfied my hunger and i'm happy but if you are already finished the food somebody gives you the food the food does not bring you the same pleasure mm, that correct. you would have if you were hungry for it correct. right the experience at the body level can be shared with anybody else same food i give it to you and if you are hungry you will have the same experience also so it's easy to understand each other's experience and you will have the same experience if you are hungry i give you the food if i am hungry i am i get the food so things are very simple at the body level the discomfort at the body level can be satisfied with little bit of effort the mind is another story <laughs> mind wants so many things but at the same time no we have to, to we have to realize that there is a positive pleasure you wanted a brand new car and you got a new car and that's a positive pleasure 
it would not have existed if the car was not there, if your mind was not there. So there is a positive pleasure you can have. So these are glimpses of pleasure that you can definitely have that a simple body was not able to provide. The body has, at body level, there are no pleasures. There is nothing but discomfort if the body's needs are not taken care of. But at the mind level, the mind's desires are so many. The problem at the mind level is that mind's desires cannot be satisfied that easily. And whenever they are satisfied, there are like flashes of pleasures, like lightning happening in a very dark sky. It will happen for a few seconds, and there is a prolonged <coughs> darkness, and again, lightning comes, there is a pleasure, and then again, a darkness. So that's the play of the mind, because mind is very subtle. The body is sthul, body is fixed, body has limited mobility body has limited needs and that's why it's relatively easy to take care of the body but when it comes to the mind mind makes a lot of projections mind makes a lot of desires and to finish all these things it requires a lot of efforts sometimes you be successful sometimes you are not the body makes you live in the future if I'm sorry the mind the body makes you live in the past. For example, you are habituated to live, uh, sleep in your own bed. But even if you give the body something better, you say you're traveling, you slept in a five-star hotel, but it's not your bed. So you, you, you miss, may not be able to sleep. You miss your bed. body <laughs> has a tendency to stick to its old habits. In fact, our body is a result of all the past that we have been carrying along. Evolution, our legs and eyes and the whole body has been created, we borrowed from a lot of animals. Our, so all the physical structures that we have, plus our old habits. Body is used to eating at the same time, pretty much every day, uh, drink pretty much the same amount every day, wake up the same amount. As long as basic needs are met with the body, body does not complain. Body does not resolve, uh, revolt against anything does not create any problem for you because the body's needs are very simple. But mind being very subtle, it makes all the projections. It's not happy with whatever is there. The job of the mind is to make you live in the future. Now, your past is infinite because imagine we came from God knows where, 13 and a half billion years is the evolution of the universe all the way to bring you up to here. So, and we are the result of that. Our habits that we have created is all about the past. So body is hooked to the past. Mind is hooked on the future. It wants to do this, it wants to do that. So the pleasures that you receive at the mind level are very limited. It, the pleasures is gonna be very short lasting. And then, then you have to make you go again after another pleasure, right? So what happens is, the bodies will only if its basic needs are continued and whatever existence it's used to is fine. In the old times, when the people were relatively poor, there were really not much of a fluctuations in their life. There were no TV, there were no gadgets, there was no demands or nothing available. So basically they woke up in the morning they did basically the same thing every day. They ate the same food every day. There were no extravagant gourmet restaurants, nothing like that. Life was very simple and the body was happy. So people were happy. That's the life of an animal. As long as the animal is provided with the food, shelter, procreations, the animal is happy. The, when the mind starts working, that's when the body starts revolting. Because now with the jet set travels, going all over the places, trying this food, trying that food. Instead of body being happy with the simple food on a day-to-day -day basis, on a regular basis, now the mind is throwing all these different cuisines, different this, different that, eating one day at this time, eating different time of the different day, waking up, staying up too late at the parties, this and that. Instead of waking five o'clock in the morning every day, now you have party to attend. 
all these things throws the body off. And that's why the diseases of the body starts, because of the mind. Because now mind's desires have, there are no limits. All the things available, now the existence of a human being is relying at the mind level. Right? Because so far, when the life was simple, the body level existence, there was no much of a problem. Diabetes, cholesterol, heart attacks never existed. Mm -hmm. But now, the, we are evolving to the mind level. <clears throat> So at the mind level, body has started revolting because it's feeling the effects of the changed behavior of the mind. So the body level pleasures are only the absence of discomfort. The mind level pleasures are when you actually get something, whatever you desire for, then the pleasure is created, which is a positive pleasure. Mullah Nasruddin. Mm -hmm. once was sitting in a corner, very depressed. And one of the guys came, asked him, why are you looking so depressed? He <coughs> said, I don't know what to tell you, man. My life is all upside down. He says, why? What happened? Well, I lost pretty much all my money in the business. He says, okay, but you have a wife and a kids. Oh, don't even talk about it. <coughs> my wife is... She's a, she just keeps on complaining all the time and every time the moment I put my foot in the house she starts shouting and this and that and all that. But how about your son? Oh, he's no good. He's, a, he's already a junkie. He's doing drugs and this and that and he doesn't go to school and he's another headache and this and that. And he says, that's what else are your problem? He says, I have these shoes. They keep on hurting me all the time. He says, I can understand you can't change your business overnight. You cannot change your wife overnight, you cannot change your son overnight, but at least you can have new shoes. It's a simple thing. Oh, don't even talk about changing the shoes. He says, why not? All day long, they keep on hurting me. When I go home and I, when I take my shoes off, feels so good. that feels so good. <laughs> that's the only pleasure that's left in my life. <laughs> and you want to take that away from me? No, I'm not going to let that happen. With all the other problems I have, that's the true pleasure that I have to take my shoes hurting off. shoes. <laughs> so that's what the story of a lot of people, when mind level, all the pleasure they don't have, the only comfort that you have called relative comfort is at the body level. It's when the body is discomfort. It's lack of pain. Lack of pain, exactly. <laughs> so there is no positive pleasure. So mind is able to give you positive pleasure. But problems come along with it that the pleasure is very transient. It's very finicky. It's very short-lasting. On top of that, every person's definition is different. The same music that you like, I may not like. So there is a discrepancy. So I have to create my own music. set of pleasures around me. You have to start creating. And it's not necessary that husband and wife may share the same pleasures. So everybody's going in thousand different ways. So there is no connection left within the world, right? Or stop making different music. Play. Well, it's, that's, that's it. the mind though. The problem is we're living at the mind level. For example, in the East, we say, oh, divorces are not common. Like the marriages, marriages existed so far in the East at the body level. Mm. There were not many requirements at the mind level. We had not evolved to the mind level yet. The purpose of the marriage institution was only to satisfy okay. the basic needs. body needs. <clears throat> there was nothing expected out of the marriage. But now the, we are following the West where the people have started living at the mind level. Now there are so much desires from each other that I want this from my spouse, I want this from my spouse to be happy. Because at the body level, if your basic needs are met, the divorces don't have to happen. So that's fine. Because as long as body needs are met, that's fine. But when the mind level needs are comes, that means the desires are going over and above what I get. Just because the divorces don't happen in the East does not mean that mind level adulteries are not committed. They are committed right and left all the time. But at the, in the West, at least they express it that, okay, this is my desire. And 
the discrepancy starts and then the divorces happen. But now even the divorces are taking long time because mind wants the resolution very fast. Whatever mind desires, they want to have it right away, right? So divorces take long time, they're complicated, it's costly. So now even the marriages, trial marriages, okay, we live together, we don't have to get married. So anytime you want to break up, you can walk away. It's convenient. So those things are becoming a reality. And day by day, more and more children... Drive through marriage. <laughs> try, try through marriage. Right? Drive through. Try through marriage. Pick up and drop off, whatever, right? <laughs> so, and those things are happening. A lot of kids, 30s, mid-30s, they just decide not to get married. This morning I was at the... You know, the thing is that people are... The mind always makes you think that tomorrow is going to be better. So it makes you run and desires. So it's a lot of times it's difficult to really run after every single object. How many desires? That's why new entertainments keep coming in the West all the time. New video games, new shows, new this, new that. Entertainment industry has flourished like anything just to keep the mind occupied, keep the mind happy. So that whatever, even though sometimes the new thing can be worse than the old thing, mind wants to change. <clears throat> Despite that, the mind, even though it knows that the new thing may not be necessarily better than the old one, but as long as the mind thinks that maybe the new thing will be a little better, keeps going after it anyway. So, this morning I was at the store, right, picking up the coffee. So, the, the guy who was working, in, he, he, the one guy came in and he asked me, so, oh, so there was a finally jackpot, somebody won? He says, yeah, yeah, 300 million. Ah! <laughs> he almost, almost yeah, thought that he was going to win. He said, was that somebody from New Jersey? He says, yeah, yeah. I knew it. I knew somebody was going to win from New Jersey. That's why I had bought the ticket. That's but me. it's just that. <laughs> right, exactly. So he says, but you know what? This is too big a jackpot. I don't think it's fair that one person should get that 300 million dollars. Now his problem is not that why one got, because he didn't get it, that's why his problem was. So his dream was to get the 300 million, so now he's very upset. And so he says, no, 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 one person should not, at least they should divide between say 10 people. Now, you know, he has nothing to do with all these things now, but he's spending like half an hour discussing what the lottery commission should have done, right? And all that because he bought the ticket and he didn't win, so he has a big problem. So another guy walks in, I agree with you, 100%. You know, why 10 people? There should be 100 people uh, sharing that, or maybe 300 people sharing that $300 million. At least everybody should have a comfortable living with million dollars, this and that and all that. All these things, because they bought the tickets and they didn't win. So, so there's such a huge discussion about if, all this. If they would have won, they go like, oh, there's another person who yeah. won. And, and if they had won, they wouldn't want to yeah, share with anybody anyway. <laughs> Yeah. They wouldn't want to share with one person. Forget about 300 people. Forget about 300 people. <laughs> so, that's what mind, that's the play of the mind. So, at the mind level, to really look at it this way, there is no suffering. There is suffering, but we'll come to that later. At the body level, there is nothing but suffering. And whenever you do get a pleasure, it's an absence of suffering that we call pleasure. So it's like a relative pleasure. At the mind level, there is a positive pleasure. Mind is all about pleasure. But once you're used to something and you don't get it, that's when the discomfort starts. <coughs> you are used to certain lifestyle. You used to drive in Mercedes and now you have to drive Toyota. You're unhappy. For whatever may be the reason, you don't, you don't like it. If you tell Adivasis living in the jungle, if he cannot listen to a classical music, what does he care? If he does not, he was never exposed to that, and he does not get it, it doesn't bother him. So there is really no discomfort. There is no basic need for the mind. Mind creates its own needs. It imagines those needs, but whatever, it does not come under the umbrella of that imagination. Mind, it doesn't bother him. If you don't know Sanskrit and cannot read Kalidas's poems, it won't bother you. But once you read and then you lose your eyesight and you cannot read anymore, then you have a problem. So once the mind is used to certain thing, 
and it has reached to that level and doesn't get any more, that's when the mind starts rebelling. So 